um, indicating that they was underselling and they investigating uh, that as well. We've just had the resignation. We don't have know why, but the resignation of the recently installed uh, executive, chief executive officer of the CIU up in, in St. Kitts Nevis. The Enhanced Citizenship by Investment Program has been crafted on a sustainable model that will ensure that St. Kitts and the Nevis continues to be the envy of the international community by injecting high levels of integrity and administrative improvements. The program has also been structured to allow for greater transparency and accountability. So I don't know about going back. I think where there, there's evidence of any wrongdoing or underselling, law enforcement needs to deal with that. I, I don't think that should be under regulator, in all fairness. Right? So that's why I said, if you know of anyone knows of underselling, FIU, law enforcement, and the unit. And then they will work through their network to address this situation. They all have cooperation that goes beyond the border. They can speak to US, UK, Canada, anywhere in the world. They have a network to address these things. The regulator is focused on standards, compliance, and engagement with international partners. How serious is the situation in Dominica of the loss of correspondent banking? What situation? Uh, is what the loss? loss of correspondent banking in Dominica. What, what loss of what correspondent bank? Well, the Prime Minister of Dominica has acknowledged that mm -hmm. there, there were some issues with the correspondent banking. Um, we're getting reports that there is a loss um, with the UK, um, so European banks, mm -hmm. um, Bank of America. I, I'm not certain if there is a loss of corresponding bank in there as well. But within the CIP, um, it's very difficult to have any sort of money transfers happen um, pertaining to the CIP. The ECCB is not aware? So I'm not aware of a Bank of America um, loss. I mean, uh, we, we are in touch with, with the correspondent banks on an ongoing basis. We did lose correspondent banks several years ago. Uh, we had to fight very hard as a region to preserve our correspondent bank relations. And for the most part, those things, the relations have stabilized. We have had one or two um, I think in the last year uh, in the UK uh, there's one institution I'm aware of that did withdraw services from a couple of our countries um, not just Dominica if I recall maybe two or three of the countries and we have had conversations with that with that particular corresponding bank the reality is that we need corresponding banks to be able to do business with the rest of the world so as a central bank we are in constant dialogue with correspondent banks to understand if there are any concerns and to see what, if anything, we can do as a central bank to support our member countries and specifically our banks to preserve those relationships. Clearly, it's a dynamic situation and we have to continually. So the, the, I'm not sure if there's something new that I haven't heard in the last couple of days, uh, the question you raised. but. To my knowledge, uh, there's no loss of correspondence with Bank of America. We do from time to time have conversations with several of them, including Bank of America. Mm -hmm. And we have to continue to do that. And part of the reason I think we want to have a regulator beyond the obvious standards and so on is to reduce the risk profile of these programs. Because to the extent that we reduce the risk profile, Lisa, then I think it provides additional comfort and confidence to our correspondent banks. So that is an important outcome, an important benefit of pursuing the CIP regulator. So uh, the claims of money laundering within the CBI uh, scheme or the programs uh, by uh, concerning four OECS banks, it's said to have affected the correspondent banking. Are you aware at all? 
I am not aware that there's been any specific issue. Uh, no, no correspondent bank has come to our central bank on any specific issue on that. Three more banks are said to uh, to are expected, along with the bank in St. Kitts Nevis, to be named in, in the MSR uh, uh, lawsuit uh, for money laundering. What are the what are those consequences for us, um, and especially with the the bank's stability, the ECCB's stability, as well as the relationship with the U.S. Treasury? So. Uh, um, you suggesting developments of which I'm unaware. So I have to start with that. I, I don't know that any of these additional banks are going to be losing any correspondence. I have no knowledge of that. I have not seen from neither from the banks themselves nor from the correspondent bank that that is going to happen. But even to have so a I, bank I, identified. I, I, I want to be careful that this, we're not taking speculation as fact. Right? No. As a central bank, we, we have to focus on the factual matrix and work with that. No. To your question about implication, we are concerned about the preservation of these relations. Mm -hmm. the, it is vital for financial stability. You, you cannot run a bank effectively in this day and age without a corresponding bank. So we need to preserve these relationships. And anything that we can do as a central bank to support our countries to support our banks, to preserve these things, whether that is advocacy with the U.S. Treasury, whether that is direct engagement with the corresponding bank, we will do as we have done. Uh, we will be next month in Washington, D.C., around the annual meeting, and we will have some more of those conversations. So that is the stance of the central bank. Any suggestion, anything that could undermine that those relationships or the reputation of our banks and our credit, our currency union would concern the ECCB. Do you care to know what's with contained within the, the, the lawsuit? Have you read it? It's available online. Have you read it? I have seen commentary, including yours. And that of the uh, guests, especially that, uh, uh, Dr. Fontaine that, 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 from Dominica. Did you that, watch that, that one? No, I didn't see that one. But that, that's how I know you're alive and well, Lisa. I've seen some commentary. Um, and I have... It's been brought to my attention, some of the things. I have obviously not read it, all of it. Uh, I think, as I said, these things are now a matter of litigation. Let us see how they unfold. So I haven't read all of it. But I have, it, you know, the things that if a bank is named or there is some reference to the Caribbean, obviously, I pay attention. So I keep an eye on those things, but I can't say I've read all of those things because I have not, in all honesty. Okay. I am Alvarine Cable. I am Carissa Cable. Thank you for joining us on KN Week.